Hello and welcome to Bespoke Unit. In this video, I'll be shaving off my four month old beard with a stray razor. So I've been growing this beard now for just over four months. It's been trimmed once into shape and I've kind of just let it grow naturally. Uh, I enjoyed it and it was particularly useful when writing all the beard content on Bespoke Unit, but now I'm starting to miss the ritual of wet shaving. If you go on BespokeUnit.com or if you've been there recently, you'll notice that, that we've got an entire category dedicated to wet shaving. So when writing this, I start to think, ooh, I do actually miss the, the ritual, the ceremony that comes on a daily or, you know, every two day basis. So uh, without further ado, let's get to it. Um, so what I've done is I've just had a shower, my razors, I've got two because I've got a lot of hair to remove so in case one dulls during the shave I don't want to be found sort of embarrassed mid-video. I've got two razors that I uh, honed and stropped given that it's been quite a while since I last shaved so i got to admit I'm a little bit nervous doing this in front of camera, there could be an accident, who knows. Uh, I just had a shower as well and I put in a bit of beard oil um, to make it slightly more lubricated, to make it easy, easier for the blade to pass through this hair. Uh, I'm also going to put on a little bit of uh, alum, potash alum, which is a natural stone. Normally you put this on after shaving, but when you have thick beard, it actually helps um, in, sort of reduce friction and make the passes for your blade much easier as well. So I'm going to put a bit of that in. Um, my uh, brush, which has been uh, soaking while I was shaving, is here, it's ready. Now this is a uh, horsehair brush by uh, Guilon. You can read about this particular brush in uh, a link below, and you can also buy it for yourself. It's uh, currently my favourite. Uh, what I really like about this is it's actually made from horsehair rather than badger or, or, or synthetic, which are more commonly known fibres and uh, it's a fantastic brush, it's very soft, it's got very little backbone so if you don't like that sort of scratchiness uh, that you can have from um, the coarse bristles of a badger, these are a great alternative. So what I've been doing uh, in the meantime is uh, while I was having my shower, I was blooming my soap. This means uh, I've been leaving some warm water in the, uh, in the base of it, like this, just a little surface of warm water to let the uh, soap soften up. I'm not going to get rid of that water, in fact I'm going to put it in a, another bowl here. Uh, hope you like this. This I actually got from Maison du Monde, uh, which is a um, decoration shop in France. I saw it on Badger Face, I thought this would be perfect. Uh, so I'm going to put that there and I'm going to do uh, what's called loading the brush. So loading the brush means we're going to get a bit of soap onto the brush and we're then going to move that onto uh, another bowl which I have just here. So I'm going to start turning in semicircles and then I'll go back again. So I'll just keep repeating this until I feel that I've got a thick consistency of soap. I think I've put in a little bit too much water uh, since I haven't shave for a while, I've kind of maybe lost the knack of it. That said, I actually did quite a few loads for the uh, champagne, uh, for the champagne, for the shaving content. I did a couple of photos, as you may have noticed, and that worked really well. So, ah, this is fine. So I've got what is called a snoodle of soap, which is uh, considered to be the right amount. I've just loaded that onto my brush. I'm going to take another mug, not the one with the bloom in it, so a mug here. I'm just going to put this in and start turning it in there. So you want it to bend and you want to turn it around in circular motions. So you don't want to press too hard, you don't want to break your brush, uh, you don't want to damage it over with too much pressure. Um, you want to do some circular, uh, some clockwise motions, some anti-clockwise motions, just to get that soap nice and thick and creamy, and you want to create that lather. You can also read all about how to create a lather on this boat unit, there's a link below with the full guide and an infographic on how to do this, because I realise I am a little bit far from the camera, so you may not see exactly what I'm doing. So there we go, we have a nice 
and seems to be becoming a nice thick cream. Uh, this particular soap, by the way, I absolutely love it. It's a donkey milk soap. Uh, I haven't found this, no, I live in France and I haven't seen this available in the States, this exact one, but I've seen one that is very similar that I've used in the past that I absolutely love, which you can find in the link below as well, uh, which is also a donkey, donkey's milk uh, soap that comes from France, from um, a small farm in central France actually. So definitely worth giving a try. So I've been beating around the bush, or uh, being around the brush long enough, let's get started. So I've got some warm water here, some cold water here, you'll see why later. Oh by the way, I didn't use the bloom when lathering, sometimes you can add some water to your um, to your brush, to, uh, to your lather in case it's too thick, but in the end it was just fine because I actually had a lot of water in there to begin with. I'm just gonna because I've been talking a while, just gonna, there we go, put that, some water in there. <clears throat> so, to apply soap to a beard is a little bit harder than applying it to a, uh, a couple of days of stubble. So I might have to do a couple more loads of uh, soap. Um, I'll leave the camera turning, but I may edit that out if it gets too long, but let's give it a try. What I love about this soap is that the lather is so thick and creamy that even with a tiny amount you can get a really thick load uh, and you can get quite a lot of lather which makes it much much easier to to do large amounts. Um, I've shaved off a beard not as long as this, this is actually the probably the longest I've ever shaved off. Most people, by the way, would probably trim their beard first, but hey, I like to do things the hard way. So yeah, I probably need to do another load of, uh, another load there. I'm gonna use the blue water, just dip that in. Just load up some more. Thing is, I have to do this quite quickly because I don't want the soap to dry on my uh, on my beard. I want to keep it wet, ensure that we've got that lubrication and reduce friction when passing the brush over. Otherwise, it might tug on my beard, and that would be very uncomfortable. But that said, I have uh, done my best in honing my razors. They're as sharp as they can be. Um, I haven't done it in this video, but you can see other videos about it. If we've done one, you'll see a recommendation just above. If not, you can head to a link below where we've actually written about how to, uh, how to hone a straight razor, which actually may be even better because we have some GIFs and some graphics, very detailed ones, uh, that show the exact movements that you need to do, which can be actually quite hard to capture on a video. Okay, so I think this is as thick as I'm gonna be able to get the cream in my beard. Uh, so I might have to just get started with this and see how it goes. I'll do another load if I have to. But because I've got two razors, I've got two with uh, very different grinds. I've got one with a uh, sort of half hollow grind. Uh, this is uh, one that I actually got from Whip Dog, uh, who is a fantastic uh, uh, reseller and restorer of uh, antique razors, and he's also got some new gear as well, and he's great for newbies because he offers some really good prices on some vintage razors. Um, so this is probably the first razor I've actually had, and I just keep on using it because it's just so good. Um, this one has a slightly thicker grind, which means it will be better for long hair. And this one has a very, very thin grind. It's almost slightly over honed. It's what's called a uh, singing, uh, a singing uh, hollow grind, which means it's very, very, very thin. It almost sings when I draw my thumb across it. So we're gonna start with a thick one. Hopefully the soap hasn't dried because I've been talking. Now that looks pretty thick. Uh, I seem to have got it all over my t-shirt because I have been moving. And let's get started. I, um, by the way, have a towel here, and I'm going to wipe the soap and the hair onto this towel, like so, rather than uh, dip it in the water because I've got a lot of hair, and that means this is going to get full. If you're using your sink, you probably want to do something very similar as well because with all that hair getting into the sink, 
fishing it out will be a challenge and letting it drain in will mean your drain will get blocked. Uh, I've been there many times and it's quite unpleasant to unblock. So, what we want to do, is, oh this isn't a very easy position to shave from. So I'm going to use my left hand and I'm going to reach over here to my sideburn and pull it up and stretch the skin. Then I'm going to use the blade and in sort of medium strokes I'm going to go down. So I'm wiping the blade off on the, um, on the towel that's on my knee. So I'm going to go with the grain which means I'm going in the direction that my hair grows. I'm going to just take off a first layer of hair. I'm not going to go all the way down to the skin. Um, I'm going to do a first pass. I'm probably going to have to do three or four here because my beard is so long. I'm just going to take the first pass, uh, the first layer of hair off. As you can see, I've already taken quite a lot, especially around here. But I'm not going to keep going. I'm going to do the whole face, and then I'm going to come back to it in a second pass and then a third pass. Uh, as you can see, I've switched my hand. Um, to do your left side, it's better to use your left hand, and to use your right side, it's better to use your right hand. This may seem counterintuitive. You may want to use your stronger hand, your main hand, on the left side, but as you can see, say this is a mirror, I can't actually see what I'm doing, or I've got very reduced strength. My eye is, is blocked, so I can't see what's happening, and uh, the strength I have, if I were to do this, I've got very little strength. So the best way is to change your handing entirely and then shave with it. Now, this may seem quite of a, a bit of a challenge at first because it's not your dominant hand and you're not used to using it, but trust me, you'll actually get used to it very quickly. Uh, I think just a week of daily shaving would be more than enough. And you'll actually find that your hand-eye coordination with both hands improves thanks to doing this. <laughs> oh wow, there's so much hair. I'm actually amazed how much I managed to grow in four months. To say I had it trimmed a couple of times too. See, I'm just, uh, most of it, I'm just taking little bits of hair off. We're just moving the hair away. This might take a while. So I hope you're comfortable and I hope you're enjoying this because, uh, I certainly am. It feels quite good actually to see the skin on these. Although, I'm going to miss the beard. And by the way, if you're not sure about removing your beard, if you don't know if you want to shave it off, if maybe the time isn't right for you, um, just head to another link below. We have an entire guide on beards, on accessories for beards. So if you need some styling help, just head to Bespoke Unit uh, and you'll find um, a plenty of advice on different styles according to your face shape. And if you're having problems with your beard, for example, irritation, itchiness, anything like that, we also have a section which is dedicated to this and the sort of accessories you can get, such as beard oil, or beard balm, uh, brushes and combs, which will really help maintain that beard and keep it healthy, which will reduce itchiness, irritation or coarseness in the beard. But if you're absolutely convinced you want to shave off your beard, well, I'm not exactly going to stop you because that's exactly what I'm doing right now. We're really getting that. I can start to see a little bit of skin. So as I said, this is a lot of hair to go through. So I'm actually expecting this razor to become a little bit duller over time, which is why I'm not going to do the finishing touches with it. It's a great razor for it's probably the most versatile razor I have. I've got a couple of wedges and I can never really seem to get them as sharp as a hollow grind. So I think I'm going to load up some more soap on my beard because you can see it's more or less gone. Uh, I might actually wet my beard as well. So I'm going to put in a bit of that bloom water. There we go. And 
I'm very tempted to keep the moustache, uh, but yeah, I think I'm going to go fully clean shaven, at least for the purpose of this video, maybe I'll grow one again later. I've always preferred moustaches to beards, but uh, my wife isn't much of a fan. And uh, here we go. So you can see I'm applying it. Now it's easier to see what I'm doing uh, now, now that I have less beard. I'm using circular motions to sort of wipe and deliver all that soap onto my uh, skin and beard. Think of um, say a tornado or even a car wash. You know electric car washes? They have those big, uh, big uh, sort of brushes that turn. If you want to do something similar, you want to kind of whip the soap across you. Now a way to, by the way, do uh, apply it above your nose is you can hold it like this, you move your nose up, you can do that, but I don't mind actually getting it on my mouth. So if I was if it was a barber that did it, well I'd probably be a bit annoyed, but doing it to myself at home, I'm not that bothered. There we go. That's a nice thick dollop. You can see this is, this is a, a brush that sort of has no backbone at all. That ball brush enthusiast would hate this. I'm just going to get rid of some of this. Yeah, ball brush uh, enthusiast would hate uh, this brush. But maybe they'd like the change as well. It is the polar opposite. So I'm kind of going against my advice, I'm starting to put on a little bit of pressure on the beard because uh, frankly I've had enough of um, <laughs> doing pass after pass but when I get down to the skin I'm going to be very gentle because saying I haven't had a, a shave in four months my skin is going to be very sensitive so uh, we'll go through that in detail as well exactly you know steps to take on the finishing touches but also the post-shave care. At the moment, you know, it's kind of disorganized. When you've got a couple of days stubble, it's much easier to do. You just sort of have a map. You could say we actually have a map on bespokeunit.com uh, where you do different areas uh, in a different time, sort of in a particular order. But um, because of this beard is just enormous, I'm being a bit disorganized and I'm just attacking wherever the hair is longest and then sort of trying to break it down that way. The hair is, just doesn't seem to want to go away. There we go. I don't know if you can see in the, on the camera, but I am absolutely covered in hair all over right now. <laughs> absolutely crazy. There's even, I tried not to get any hair in the water, there's even hair there. So yeah, I'm starting to feel that my razor is, uh, is getting weak. It's starting to dull, tug ever so slightly. So it's getting a bit uncomfortable. Ideally, I would have had three razors, but you know, I didn't think to prepare that far ahead. So I'm going to use this for as long as possible because I don't want my um, other razor to dull. Uh, I've got a hair in my mouth. Eh. I don't want my other razor to dull because um, that would be uh, a shame because it's for the finishing touches and on the final passes, final two passes, maybe three. So, I'm not moving my head away from where I'm shaving uh, just to um, just to be able to see better. I'm actually trying to stretch the skin every time I shave. The taut you make it, the easier it is for the beard, for the blade to go through the beard. It's not moving with the skin and also the sort of tauter you have your skin, the harder it is for the blade to cut into it. So I actually haven't been talking about the type of strokes I'm using, uh, nor the uh, angle of the cut. Um, so as you can see, I've been using sort of very straight 
movements. I never move it like a, like a knife. You do that, you will cut yourself straight away. Uh, there's not even a gamble, you will. And my movements, they are not long like in the movies because that just doesn't work. Sort of short, repeated. Um, I wouldn't do it as fast as this if I were beginning again. Um, I'm, I'm, I'm allowing myself to go actually quite fast as well because because I'm shaving off beard and I'm not against skin. I'm getting there. Well, still plenty to go though. But I can actually see skin. The Adam's apple is the worst place. I hate shaving around here. And my sort of the um, sort of the shaving angle. I'm going to use some water here because now I'm just sort of rubbing it in here. Um, the shaving angle should be about 30%, not too much, that's just aggressive, that's just going to cut you, it's not going to cut your hair, uh, this is also a bit much, and so if the more reduced that angle is against the skin, the flatter the blade is against the skin, the less cutting it's actually going to do. If you do it completely flat, you're just going to sort of tug on the hairs and maybe just run over them, but you're not going to cut anything, it's actually not going to irritate your skin if anything. So this side is more or less done, uh, or getting done. I'm going to actually load some more soap here. Uh, yeah, I think I'm going to load more soap. I probably look a bit of a, a bit of a weird one with all this growth here. Don't use some of that blue water again. Load some more soap. By the way, if you see me jumping around, it's probably because I decided to edit this because it was getting too long. Uh, in terms of recording time, we're already about 30 minutes, 25, something like that. Mm. I think I did well to choose a horse hair brush as well because I think the scritchy scrotchiness, the sort of that scratchy coarseness of a bit uh, of a ball brush would probably irritate my skin about now. I've got very sensitive skin, by the way. Um, so, because this is quite soft, it's actually quite refreshing after having sort of given my skin hell. So I've gone a bit quiet there, haven't I? No, do you want me to keep talking? I'm not sure if I... I'm best to keep chatting away. That's going to make this video feel shorter. Or if it's just going to irritate people who probably just want to see a guy shave off his beard or learn how to use a straight razor. Oh, another thing if you want to learn how to use a straight razor. Well, head to Bespoke and then we've got some really detailed guides there which also go into um, anything from uh, well, we've got graphics and gifts and all sorts which talk about blade angles, directions, but also how to hold a straight razor. As you can see, you know, you pinch it with your thumb and forefinger, you've got your middle finger here, riding finger sort of relaxes over what's called the tang, which is this metal part, and then this finger either re sort of rests gently, sort of tucks under the, the tang so it gives you a bit more counterbalance. So I kind of left the bits I hate the most to shave till last. I often have a lot of goatees because I just cannot stand shaving around the chin. It's so pernickety and sensitive.
I hate shaving the moustache area actually even more because um, I used to apply too much pressure and I used to get a lot of rashes and peeling skin above my lip. Kind of my fault. And we're getting that. I'm doing something I probably shouldn't, which is uh, shaving areas where there's no soap. I guess that's because I'm just starting to get a little bit impatient, which I really shouldn't. I should sort of chill out a bit more. But I'm aware that this video is starting to get a bit longer. So you can see when I start to move to the corner of my mouth, I open my mouth and I stretch it out. The idea is that it, um, again, creates that tension of the skin and uh, stops me from uh, sort of it being too flexible and the blade digging in. So we're going to do the moustache now, nice and easy. Now here I'm going to be very careful. Like I said, I'm very sensitive around around the mouth, uh, well, uh, above, the, above the lip. I'm going to slowly reduce the length of the beard here, or the moustache technically. See, once this is all, all this sort of blatant beard is gone, I'm actually going to go all over again, as if I hadn't even started at all, uh, with the other blade. So I'm going to do, you know, a full lather, and that would be quite good because you'll see, you know, how to shave a straight razor on a normal day. So, I'm doing this, but we can sort of bite your, uh, bite your, uh, bite your top lip. You can even pull on your nose. There are lots of ways of creating tension um, on your skin. Um, just choose the ones that you know you feel more comfortable with. You feel the most effective. If you're wondering, by the way, normally I uh, actually shave um, in the bathroom, but I didn't want to film there since I do most of my videos in this room. Kind of felt cool to do it here, an old-fashioned way, on my desk. No, I actually might have a cigar after this. Let's see. And we'll put a little bit more soap there. I have to do another load actually. The soap's starting to get dry too, so is my skin, so I might need to moisten it either with a shower or dunking my head on her hair, ideally a wet towel, but that means that I'd have to, a shower or a hot towel means I'd have to stop the video and I'd like to get this done. I'm just gonna rinse my face now, which is still relatively warm. So for me, the most important area to create tension on your skin is here uh, because the chin is quite difficult to shave. So I pull with my lip here and then I tug down with my hand below. I think that this uh, This raise is more or less outliving its usefulness. Uh, 
And I think after I've just finished here, I'm gonna move on to the other blade. Hopefully this will be the last load. Yeah, a little bit more blue water there, up. nice oh this is such a nice brush now, it's a lot floppier than a more badger brush but it's an entirely different experience I really like it, it just sort of massages your skin very gently very gently and it goes great with this uh, French uh, donkey milk soap My sideburns, if you're wondering, I do it just from the lobe here, and then I do it a slightly diagonal uh, shape, which is perpendicular to my jawline. The idea is that it helps add some definition to my, my face shape, but I don't like wide sideburns, so I'm just going to knock that in. I don't always have sideburns. Well, I always have a little bit of sideburns. I used to have mutton chops at one point. Didn't really suit me. So I'm going to start using the water here. Again, this is quite a small mirror, it's actually hard to see what I'm doing, but. It's not actually stretching, which I should be doing. For the, at least for the sake of demonstration. So this is a very, very fine, very hollow grind. As you can hear. Sounds ever so slightly overhanged. But it was like that when I got it. Uh, I thought, oh, this would be interesting to. See how it feels. I also like the, the design. I think that. You know, when you can pick up at a flea market a uh, straight razor for about five euros, which is around seven dollars, you think, what the heck? Before you know it, you've got 20 of them, they're all underhoned, overhoned, got smiles and frowns just because you thought they were interesting objects. That's not to say I don't know what I'm buying where I like to get defective uh, razor blade, uh, razors. Um, I mean, I didn't always shave with a straight razor, and I used to be very much a beginner. Still am in many respects. Now some new ones. I mean, we reviewed five new ones in uh, in our straight razor, straight shaving, uh, straight razor shaving section. I should show you them, see how they actually shave. Uh, I didn't think of that until just now, which is a bit late. Now, I don't know if you can see in the video, but I'm starting to get a couple of spots, get a bit red, a little bit signs of irritation. Hey, that's kind of inevitable. Unless you're an absolute expert, which I don't know. I mean, I, I really love shaving with straight razor and I do it regularly. But um, yeah, when you pass a blade so many times over your skin, it's kind of inevitable that it gets irritated because mine's quite sensitive and really susceptible to you know uh, vibrations, well, vibrations of metal. 
it can come up red and a rash very quickly. Yeah, slightly wonky. I'll take some off here. So I'm not using my uh, I'm using my cheat bones as a guide. But remember, we don't have symmetrical faces, so don't use your ears as a guide. Is what I'm saying. It's always wonky, even on a small level. I'm going to do another pass, just a final one. Oh, I can't get enough of this brush. It's changed my life. It's so soft. Really, if you're interested in getting uh, something a little different and that's really soft, check out the V-Long. Uh, see the link below. I'll take you to current retailer that we recommend to get this. It's really good, really nice. And it's potentially, I, know, I didn't get any more information, but it's probably ethical because um, boar hair is normally obtained from the boar when it's been uh, slaughtered. Uh, badger hair, well, they kill the badger to get the hair and they don't actually eat the meat, so they just kill it for the hair. Uh, but horse hair is just when they're clipping and cutting the mane and tail. Uh, well, maybe it's when they're at the abattoir as well, but I think in general it's just when you're grooming a horse. This is a uh, hair that you take off anyway, it's much more ethical. So you can see now I'm going across the grain like so. The gentle final pass. I'm being very gentle here because my skin's kind of a little bit irritated from all, all this razor action for one day. I probably should have used a trimmer beforehand, but kind of wanted to do it like this, this video, with uh, in a video. Very dramatic. But we'll go into post shave care. So, so decrease that irritation. So um, this has been emptied out. I'm just going to pour in some cold, clean water. I'm going to wash my, rinse my face down with this. It's very refreshing. The idea is close the pores. You want the pores to be closed so. Stop any bleeding, stop any rashes, any irritations. <laughs> okay. So you can use, um, at this point, you're gonna have to look at post shave, which is very important. Now dab your skin dry, don't wipe it. That would be very painful. If you wipe it, it'll just get very irritated. And then, if you get really irritated to skin, it's good to use a uh, moisturizing cream, like a proper moisturizing cream. We can use a post-shave balm. Avoid anything that really includes um, alcohol, because that will dry the skin. Uh, and it'll make you, um, it can even irritate the skin as well. A bit of stray hair here. So you wanna opt for something that is gonna be good for your skin. Uh, we have a couple of recommendations. You can 
see the link below to test them out. Um, but I'm going to use this, which is a Penhaligon uh, Blenheim Balm, uh, Blenheim Bouquet Balm. Uh, I've actually got the uh, Wood of Toilet for it as well, which was a gift from uh, Bespoke Unit founder Paul Anthony. Uh, I haven't tried this aftershave balm yet, so I'm actually curious because it smells so good. I'm just going to wipe that down. Very soothing, very soothing. I'm going to make sure that my skin is properly hydrated so I can already feel sort of bracing, stinging feeling afterwards. This is my skin absorbing, or my dehydrated skin absorbing um, the cream, uh, which means it's getting hydrated. Um, because when you shave, uh, you're basically exfoliating yourself um, on an extreme level and uh, you are taking a layer of skin away, which means you're dehydrating yourself as well. Um, so it's actually quite hard on the skin, it's very harsh shaving with any blade, even um, a cartridge razor, which is actually worse than using a uh, straight razor or a safety razor. Then afterwards, now I've done this, I'm going to put on some more alum. Now the alum is a natural disinfectant that closes the pores. So it stops bleeding but it also disinfects skin, cut skin. I put this on after having put on cream, uh, which is a bit controversial. A lot of people put it on first and then they hydrate. But I like to put it on afterwards because I feel that this stuff blocks the pores, it sort of closes the pores, so if you're putting cream on afterwards, the cream can't actually get into your pores, it can't hydrate your skin. So here I'm just protect, you know, creating a protective layer afterwards. And then I think I'm gonna, in a couple of hours time, put on some more moisturizer, uh, because my skin looks pretty red, um, it hasn't been shaved in four months, and uh, you know, I shaved a massive beard off with a stray razor, so it was getting tugged on, it was getting irritated. I did about six passes, so yeah. I think my skin has gone through hell here, but um, already taking those two precautions is going to, um, three precautions using the cold water, that's going to reduce swelling, reduce irritation, close the pores. Uh, the cream will then hydrate and repair, and then using uh, the potash alum, uh, the alum stone or alum block that's going to uh, seal uh, the skin of course as well stop any bleeding if you have any tiny nicks or cuts you can use one of these which is a sort of little matchbook of um, little alum uh, tips which you just wet with the tongue or in water and then you can use it for more profuse you know strong bleeding in any specific areas um, all these products or products like them we review in uh, a link below for post shave regimen which will also go and comes into the steps which I just followed in how to uh, look after your skin after shaving. Um, then when it comes to putting on a scent I'm going to wait a couple of minutes before putting on uh, anything. I'm not going to put on any aftershave because aftershave often contains alcohol unless you include for example Pro Razo, they do a really good alcohol free one. Um, so I'm gonna I'm gonna wait, and I'm just gonna probably put on a fragrance like some of the fragrances we've, we've reviewed, uh, which you can also check on Bespoke Unit or even in the other videos, uh, rather than a traditional aftershave. And I'm gonna put that here rather than on the areas I've been shaving because I don't want to uh, cause that to swell or be irritated any more than it already is. So I was have to shave off a four-month-old long full beard with a straight razor uh, if you're still here well thanks for your dedication uh, feel free to subscribe like and comment on this video I'd be very interested to know what your thoughts are if your technique differs from mine even if you feel that I'm doing something incorrectly I'd be delighted to hear about it and uh, please stay tuned for more content in the future follow us on Facebook Twitter and Instagram and uh, check all the links below to uh, learn more about what we do and who we are take care